Hi everybody, me Foxy D, and today is that whole toxic masculinity thing. So, uh, and before I start, shout out to everybody who's written me or connected with me somehow. I hope I'm helping you, and you are helping me, I'll tell you that. Part of this whole thing for me right now is consolidating all of these experiences, making sense of them, looking at the dark, and in the dark sometimes we find a little light. Again, the more we understand, uh, as dark as it is, right, when you're in the midst of it or when you start to consolidate the information, for myself anyhow, the more I'm understanding the process, the better I'm feeling, the better I'm feeling about me, all right, and the more I'm understanding what people are all about, and uh, the more I'm trusting my instinct when it comes to people. So situations sometimes can alter certain people's behavior. All right, uh, social psychology in action, if you will. So toxic masculinity, how, when, why, all right. In isolation, what typically happens in hierarchical organizations, all right, where people have to show that they're very manly. I'll give you an example of police forces, happens, I've seen it. Police forces, military, all right, a lot of hazings. Um, sometimes, and actually not sometimes, but often when it comes to joining certain uh, elite groups, sports teams. Just recently, there was this high school in Toronto, I believe St. Michael's School, where uh, young men, I mean, they were like 14 or 15 years old, were hazing these recruits. They had joined the football team, and uh, they were actually sexually assaulted. They were blindfolded. Um, and one was assaulted with a broom, broom stick. And that boy's not okay today. And it'll take him a little while to be okay. We can all understand that. I mean, this is horrendous. You wouldn't expect this behavior. I'm sure when he went in for the hazing, he didn't expect to be assaulted. Supposedly someone took a video of it and shared it. I've never seen the video, nor do I want to. But I want to give you a bold example of what toxic masculinity is. Unlike that toxic femininity, and again, it goes across genders. You will find people of either gender behaving in either way, but I'm just going with the exaggerated, typical behavior of that gender. Again, like a toxically masculine behavior is something that's perceived as male, which is direct, overt, uh, aggressive physically. Every negative trait you can, uh, you can attribute towards a man all right, exaggerated would be toxic masculinity. Same thing with the toxic femininity, any behavior that you would typically attribute to women. But again, there's a crossover. We'll get there. But right now, toxic masculinity. So when organizations are hierarchical and the person at the top of the hierarchy is not a person of integrity, all right, uh, and is a person who's a power seeker and who enjoys inflicting pain on others, i.e. a narcissist, or a group of narcissists, this is the behavior that you would expect in organizations that have a lot of men in them. All right, and it happens often. Leadership is key, good leadership is key. Now, I was watching this video yesterday and I commented on it. Person is some kind of corporate hierarchy expert and he was talking about mobbing and he said what the mobby has to do is seek power through association. That means associate yourself with the top tier of this group. I completely disagreed. You're selling your soul that way. Because in such an organization where mobbing occurs, you can rest assured that that top tier person or people, okay, are not good people. They're rotten. They're narcissistic. And if you take that little mealy approach, all you become is a lapdog. So you will be the witness to mobbing. And I can speak from experience. Like I said, remember, I survived, survived, not well. <laughs> okay, I survived two mobbings within an organization. I didn't lose my job. I kowtowed and I was a lapdog, all right? And then I witnessed other people getting mobbed and it was really a, an awful feeling. And again, big apologies to the people you know, that I saw going through this and I did nothing. And I would never do that today. I learned a lot. That's part of this whole consolidation thing. <clears throat> so that's 
a good definition of toxic masculinity. Now, when I said that toxic femininity sometimes pre uh, precedes the toxic masculinity in mixed areas, this was my case. So, but I'll explain, there's nuances to it. We had changed uh, managers. So the top level manager that used to be there, all right, uh, was in this particular workplace, okay, was a man of integrity. He was male, yes, but he had integrity. There would never be a mobbing under his watch. It would have been impossible. Everybody got along. Suddenly we get a new manager and it's a woman. And it's a woman who is pretty young, early 40s, very political, very narcissistic, all right? Um, and she really made her way up the organization very, very quickly, all right? But it's no surprise. That's just how this stuff works. Um, so when you're particularly um, money motivated or power hungry and motivated, you'll do whatever you have to do to climb that ladder. Now, it works for some, not so well for others. For those for whom it does work, uh, kudos. That's what they want. That's what they get. That's fine. But there are a lot of people under that do suffer. So she comes into this organization not knowing A from, from Z, if you will. And the men that were under the main manager, okay, that were kind of like middle managers, I guess, were very offended that this youngster had come in. She was at a lower rank than they were. And so, but she was acting at a higher rank and it disturbed that balance, all right? It disturbed that hierarchy. So they see this woman in power who doesn't really deserve to be there. Again, she didn't know what she was doing um, and I can attest to that, but there she was. And so these guys were scrambling. They were bad managers to begin with though, all right? They just relied on the top dog who had been replaced with this horrible female manager uh, and so there they were scrambling and uh, doing terrible things as far as I'm concerned, all right? Um, giving us, the employees, a hard time, like releasing their frustrations on us. So what ended up happening in my case is, um, and again, I'm a pretty outspoken person, and I was at this workplace, not the previous two times I'd been mobbed or witnessed the mobbing of another um, uh, in this particular area because I was happy there and we had a really good manager and I was comfortable being myself. So I started noticing they were squeezing me, uh, squeezing me with things that were kind of like, you know, strange to me. I'll give you an example. We were looking at high res files. It was part of my job. So we had one particular person who, uh, and we had a certain criteria that we had to adhere to. So this one particular individual who had applied uh, used to drive a truck and what happened is he admitted that uh, he was in traffic one day and a woman had cut him off and instead of stopping because he could have stopped instead of stopping at a fair distance he smashed right into him so I said well okay looking at our criteria I mean it's be common sense would dictate as well this person has a problem with self-control right so this problem is a person has a problem with self-control and he's a power monger. We have an issue here. So I write up my report and the guy is done. So all of a sudden, one of these middle managers that's really upset about the female manager being there uh, rejects my claim and says, no, you know, because one of my guys said that he passed, so he's going to pass. I said, yeah, but it's illogical. And even if your guy said he should pass, look at the criteria. I'm just, you know, I have integrity. I'm doing my job. You know, are you saying that you're not going to apply the formula, okay, and that you're going to do it in a different way, just randomly because your guy says he's okay to go? And so the boss starts laughing at me, right? And he's like, well, uh, this is how it works here, right? What I say goes. So I said, wow, that's motivating, right? It thanks a lot. That's wonderful. And thereafter, other things started to happen. So they start rejecting my files, and not because I did anything wrong in the file, because constructive criticism isn't a problem, but they were squeezing me, little things, okay? Um, and not little things. These are people that are coming into an organization, and they are not ad adhering to the standards that are set forth in policy, right? I'm not a whistleblower. I didn't go and blow any whistles. I, I had nowhere to go anyway. <laughs> right? I couldn't go to the higher up 
because the higher up had hired all of her friends. All right. Uh, and those happened to be my female models, by the way, who were the buddies of the higher up. Anyhow, so what happens is, as the men are getting squeezed from the top, okay, she's taking work away from them. They're getting more and more frustrated. Well, who do you think they're going to take their frustrations out on? They started taking their frustrations out on me, the outspoken female at a much lower rank. And uh, so they started having a little bit of a fun time. Everything from, say, one of my friends, I see him in the morning, I wave, I start talking to him, and he just like looks at me and smirks and goes, work is that way. I go, what are you talking about? Like we talked, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I know work is that way. I said, you don't want to talk? I go, fine. Well, no, 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 it's okay. We'll talk, you know. And so I'm telling him about the evening and he starts snickering and, and making little jokes. And I said, man, you're starting to, you know, get on my nerves. I go, why are you doing that to me? Oh, nothing, you know, like snickering, laughing, and just really weird behavior. So this guy was across my office. <clears throat> Anyhow, so I just get in and I'm like, that's really bizarre. I start doing my work and he says, hey, hey, he goes, uh, enough talking there, eh? do your work. So I looked up and I said, uh, so-and-so, I call him Mike, Mike, it's enough. So the moment that I said that and the moment that I put my boundaries down, it was like wolves came out. So the big fat guy next to him, this ballless asshole, <laughs> sorry, comes out and goes, uh, ooh, ooh, Jenny's getting mad, right? So I looked and I go, look, uh, buddy, I said, uh, not your monkey, not your circus, right? And he looks and he goes, oh, well, uh, you can have some of my monkeys. I said, no, I got enough of my own monkeys, you know, be gone with you. So the following day, that guy, seeing him in the hall again typically I say hi stop saying hi to me that was the same week uh, that uh, they had sent out that email about the birthday uh, cake and mentioned that I was a fearful employee without mentioning my name so all of these things started happening concurrently so the big fat bloated ballist dude stops saying hello to me all right but starts going to other employees and saying what's wrong with uh, Jenny Something's wrong with Jenny. Is she okay? And then coming up to me, are you, are you okay, Jenny? So here was a dude who was like burning inside, right? Um, and again, angry with what was happening at the top, but he was exhibiting more female type behaviors. But like I said, there was very little testosterone in his system, but that's besides the point. Anyhow, so in my case, what happened is everything was fine. We had a change in management. It was a woman who was at a lower rank but was acting in a higher position. The men were scrambling, and what happened was they started exhibiting very, some of them toxically masculine behaviors, especially that guy who came up to me directly, right, and caused, as far as I'm concerned, my back issues. He's the same guy who took the knife to cut the cake and went across the table to cut it so that the knife was directly in front of my face, okay? Um, in addition to the fact that the machismo and the type of talk that was going on in our little corner of the office became beyond vulgar and rude, okay? Uh, like they were pretending to pole dance at one point. It was a predominantly male environment, by the way, where I worked, and very hierarchical. I can't say where I worked exactly, but maybe you can figure it out by what I'm saying, all right? Um, so... I saw this. So instead of the men, you know, using their brains, it was almost as though their animal brains kicked in and they started hating on everybody female. Okay. Like say it was woman's day, right? So it was woman's day. And, uh, this is at the very beginning of this whole thing. And I said, look at this. I said, no roses, no flowers. Well, we can't bring flowers to women because how is it going to be interpreted? We're going to get in trouble. And by the way, they had a bit of a point because the big boss in charge had already filed a harassment complaint against one of these higher ups for not having invited her personally to the softball game that the boys had organized. All right. But somehow he had invited her and she didn't get the invitation, something of the sort. So she was using that toxically feminine thing to get to them. 
So it exacerbated their toxic masculinity. I don't know if that's clear or not. I'm going to re-listen to the video before I post it, uh, and we'll take it from there. And if it's not clear, I will clarify. And so in a nutshell, sometimes, all right, that behavior uh, of, you know, people being extra picky will exacerbate the go-to behavior of men in these hierarchical organizations of the caveman masculine. Just is what it is. Anyhow, signing off. It's me, Thoughts and Do. Yoga.